Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Rentables Wrestling Podcast. Um, I said on Friday that I was going to be giving you the uh, results of Chikara's first eye pay per view, and since it just ended about ten minutes ago, and I'm finally getting my computer back to working so I can actually record stuff, um, that was a little frustrating, but it's okay because I'm still kind of um, I'm still kind of riding high off the show. Uh, for its first iPay-Per-View, I would say that they did a pretty good job of um, just everything. The production was um, okay. It was pretty good. I mean, it's obviously it's not going to be the level of WWE or even TNA, but uh, it was similar to their DVDs. And uh, even though there were a few little technical hiccups, uh, there really wasn't much to complain about. The one, okay, there there was one technical thing that I would like to complain about, and it's it's minor. Um, it's that the uh, the sound between the announcing and the arena was not mixed very well, so the announcers were much much louder than the arena, so we couldn't really hear. Um, couldn't it wasn't it was difficult to hear like anything that was being said in the ring uh, during a match. Like uh, so, it, it wasn't a big deal, but it was a little kind of weird. So, um, like I said, not bad, but. Uh, it could have been a little bit more even, I suppose. So uh, I'm going to get to the results and talk about the matches real quick. Uh, just so you know, I don't think I did very well as far as uh, how my picks went. Uh, looking, I'm looking back at the at the results, and uh, I think I got uh, let's see, like one, two, three, f- maybe like five of the eight. Ma- I think I got five. Okay, so that's actually not bad. Uh, but you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not going to go back and listen to my own stuff right now, anyway. Um, so let's start with the pre-show match between uh, Jigsaw and El Generico, which uh, I think were it uh, were it shown uh, with the Go Fight Live setup with multiple cameras and uh, with announcers that are not Dr. Keith Lipinski. I'm sorry, guy, uh, but um, it just it, I guess it, it was it was it, it felt like a pre-show match, which is too bad because I think these two uh, Jigsaw and El Generico deserved better than the pre-show match. But then again. Uh, the show was there to resolve conflicts and end feuds and the like. So these two had a pretty good, uh, I think it was a 9 or 10 minute match. Um, I'm not going to say it was fairly typical, but uh, it did feel kind of like they were kind of, not necessarily throwing in the towel, but um, it just felt like a very sort of by the numbers affair. Not bad, again. Um Jigsaw won with... Oh, God, what did he win with? I can't even remember. It's been, what, three hours? Not even th- not even three hours, maybe, and I've already forgotten how the match ended. Uh, I think it was with the double stomp, but, you know, feel free to correct me, uh, and I'll credit you on the, in the comments. Um, again, decent match. Uh, decent pre-show match. I wish that they had had it on the card, and these two probably would have gotten a bit more of the recognition that they deserve, but... Hopefully it'll be on the DVD, which I will definitely still be purchasing, even though I just watched the show. Okay. Well, the show proper began with the tag team contest of the Colony taking on the Young Bucks. And uh, in the first surprise of the night, uh, Marty Jannetty accompanied Matt and Nick Jackson out to the ring, which uh, I think was uh, <laughs> must have been pretty cool for them. Um... The Colony actually won, which was a surprise to me, and uh, they gained their third point and are now eligible to challenge for the uh, the Tag Team Championships, which are still being held by Fist, as far as I understand. Um, I'm happy for the Colony, I guess. Um, I'm a little disappointed that the Young Bucks are back to zero points, but that just means that they have to come back again and uh, earn their three points again. So they will get their chance to... Oh, excuse me for yelling. So they'll get their chance to uh, challenge for the tag titles. I would like to see a Young Bucks versus Fist match. I think that would be uh, pretty damn entertaining, I think. Uh, next up, uh, let's see. Next up was Sarah Del Rey uh, pretty much just destroying Jacob Hammermeyer. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty uh, pretty entertaining, I, I, would, I would say. Uh, simply for the for the reason that uh, that Jacob got curb stomped throughout the match, um, I don't remember if I've said this before, but I do enjoy Jacob's entrance, where he uh, he walks out, announces himself, 
runs to the back while his music is starting up, and then when the music hits that you know that crescendo, then he appears out of the 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 uh, out of the back as if he had just been introduced by someone else. I thought that was all. I always liked that. Now, um, again, I, I apologize for my my incredibly poor memory, but I believe after that was uh, the uh, was Amasis um, basically announcing his retirement from entering competition, which is understandable because he's because as he explained, um, I guess it would appear that his injuries were so bad that he didn't want to to accidentally take a bad bump and be paralyzed for life. So I can understand him retiring. And uh, in true uh, true heel fashion, uh, Ophidian turned heel and uh, attacked Amasis, uh, put him in the Ophidian death grip, you know, messing with his neck, and just, uh, oh, of course, the uh, the, the big thing that happened, of course, was uh, Ophidian uh, removing Amasis' mask uh, in a pretty awful turn of events, really. Now, whether or not this is going to lead to uh, something between Amasis and Ophidian, I don't know. Uh, if, 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 uh, if Amasis was told to stay out of the ring, then he should. Uh, even if it's just for one more match, I wouldn't recommend it. Seeing as how the same thing happened with Edge uh, several months ago, and he retired, so um, I would say that it's the beginning of a nice heel run for Ophidian, uh, since he's been on a bit of a losing streak as of late, and uh, this will pretty much jumpstart him into one of the top heel slots for the next year's or for next season's uh, Chikara events. Uh, next up we had Green Ant facing off against Tursus and um, I guess as the the announcers were were, were, um, were mentioning that Green Ant apparently has never defeated Tursus, which uh, I said he had at some point so it was my mistake and I apologize for that. But Green Ant did get his victory today And of course, uh, he did it in truly spectacular fashion, with uh, a couple of really impressive feats of strength, like um, hitting a an, an angle slam and uh, a superplex on Tursus, as well as uh, hitting a body slam on Tursus out on the floor, the uh, unpadded floor of the Asylum Arena or the ECW Arena. Uh, it looked painful, but uh, well for Tursus anyway, but uh, Green Ant really showing his might, his metal. Um, Tursus again showing improvement every time I see him in the ring. Uh, throwing drop kicks and trying to do moonsault. Well, he didn't try, he tried to do moonsault, but he didn't actually get to uh, use it, which is okay. But uh, I definitely felt like when when um, when Green Ant hit the uh, the angle slam, it felt like the arena. It looked like the arena shook a bit. Uh, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, it was uh, another good. Uh, all of these matches really were good. I mean, I can't. I have nothing to complain about for any of them. Uh, any of the matches. So if you do get the chance, do do buy this show. Um, we had an intermission after the Green Ant Tursus match, and then uh, we started after the intermission with Colt Cabana taking on Archibald Peck. Who was uh, our Peck was accompanied by uh, Veronica and Colt Cabani, and uh, this was prob. I mean, these two had their match at King of Trios, and uh, I don't feel like they got enough time back then. They definitely had enough time this time, this this go around, I guess I should say. And uh, Colt was his usual self, and these two these two can really work off each other well. Uh, both guys are just kind of. Innately funny, and uh, there there were just a lot of there were a lot of really funny spots. Like, um, oh god, I don't know. There there were a bunch of them. Probably the, one of the funniest ones was uh, Peck putting Colt in a sleeper hold. Colt immediately falling asleep, like actually falling asleep, lying on the mat, sucking his thumb. And so uh, Marchi Archie decides that he's going to take advantage of it. Uh, goes up to the top row, tries to hit the flying headbutt, and just as he's about to hit him. Colt sits up, 
rested and wakeful, you know, is waking up as if he's awoken from a full night's sleep and proceeds to just beat the crap out of uh, Peck and uh, gets the victory. It was a really entertaining match. There, it was a bit, you know, it was, it was mostly funny with a bit of serious in the middle, but uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, next was probably the downer of the night with uh, Icarus taking on Gregory Iron, and uh, unfortunately through, um, shall we say, uh, shenanigans, uh, Icarus wound up with the victory. And I, you know, I know that not every show can be all all of the all of the all the good guys win all the time because that would probably make for a boring show. So Icarus was the one guy. the one guy to uh, take on the responsibility of being the one heel to really uh, win and through uh, shenanigans, whatever. Uh, Point is, it left a bad taste in my mouth, but that's a good reason that it was the fifth match on the card and not the last match on the card. And hopefully it will set up a bit for uh, future stuff. Oh, of course, I forgot about after the match when uh, Gran Akuma... uh, well, the announcers were saying that he made his return last night at the Supernetico, which I really think they should have waited until tonight on iPay-Per-View so people everywhere could have seen it live. But, whatever. Uh, Grant Akuma made his return, I guess, again. Uh, was going to confront Icarus, but accidentally kicked Greg Iron in the face. Uh, so that's setting up... Setting up Icarus versus Grant Akuma for next season, which should be awesome. I think it's been a long time since Akuma was uh, in a Chikara ring, and I've missed him terribly. So I'm happy to see him back. Uh, Next up, we have the Spectral Envoy taking on the BDK. And uh, as as was pointed out, this was a Lucha de Apuestas match. Uh, Both Hollow Kid and Ultramantis Black were putting up their masks. Uh, Tim Doss was putting up his hair, and Ares was putting up the Eye of Tear which he stole from Ultramantis a couple of years ago. Uh, but this was this stuff was before I uh before I began watching Chikara, but I really want to go back to the back catalog and watch this stuff, but I really don't have the funds right now to do that. So, um this was a also a no disqualification match which uh, pretty much meant that anything goes. There was one rather scary spot near the middle of the match where where uh, Ultramantis and uh, and Ares were on the outside, standing on the uh, the wooden ring steps, there were a couple of chairs set uh, set up in front of in front of Ares, so behind Ultramantis. Ares is trying to tiger use a tiger driver on Ultramantis to drop him onto the onto the floor through the chairs, but uh, Mantis turned it into a back body drop, and I don't I can't confirm this because I only saw it once. But uh, it looked like Ares might have hit in the back of his head or his neck on the on the steps as he was falling, and of course, after he after that, I don't know if that happened, but it looked really bad. And of course, after that happened, uh, he fell onto the through the chairs and onto the floor, which of course, as I said before, is not padded, so it must have hurt like hell. Um, uh, with the end, uh, Tim Donst actually left the match at the end, just basically leaving Ares out uh, to get uh, destroyed by Hollow Wicked, and uh, Mantis finished him off with a cosmic doom through a steel chair, which looked like it probably hurt like hell. And uh, Mantis recovered the Eye of Tear, and what this is going to mean for future, for the future of Chikara and for the Spectral Envoy has remains to be seen. The final match of the night was the was the match to determine the first ever grand champion between Eddie Kingston and uh, Lightning Mike Quackenbush. One of the things that re- that was really cool about this match was as it was going on, everyone from the back, every current ma- every current person on the Chikara roster who could be there, came out ringside to surround the ring. There were even a bunch. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't actually get a chance to see many of these faces because uh, I was too busy watching the match. But apparently, a bunch of other of the uh, of former Chikara 
uh, wrestlers were there. Uh, I, I did manage to see Hydra. Uh, let's see, they were saying Mr. Zero. I believe I saw Rorschach. And apparently even Reckless Youth was there, which uh, I thought was really cool. And, of course, uh, Tommy Dreamer was in Eddie Kingston's corner uh, for the entire match. Uh, the match itself, it's one of those, it's one of the few times where I feel like a match could have gone on for a few more minutes, but as it was, I, I, if you know, if Eddie Kingston's knee is really as bad as as, uh, as he says it is, I can understand cutting it short, even though it was about 18 minutes long. It's still, uh, it was a really emotional, hard-fought battle between the two. Uh, Quackenbush showed some really uh, evil tactics, shall we say, you know, using finger pokes and things like that that were very uncharacteristic of him, which uh, I, I did I did manage to watch, uh, what was the show, Small But Mighty, uh, one of the two shows from, or one of the three shows, I guess, from October, I think it was October, I don't know, whatever, and he, uh, during his match with Sarah Del Rey, he was uh, kind of using the same sort of tactics. And uh, I guess, I don't know if that's kind of a change for him for the future, but it definitely seemed out of place for him. But then again, you know, if he's if that's how he's going to go, that's how he's going to go. Uh, but in the end, uh, Eddie Kingston won with, let's see, at least a backdrop driver, a uh, was it a tiger suplex, I think, and then two back fists to the future. It was a pretty rapid horrifying assault of moves to uh, finally win and uh, of course uh, at the, well not of course but at the end uh, Larry Sweeney's I guess his I think it was his brother and one of his good friends came out to present uh, Eddie Kingston with the uh, grand championship belt and uh, he gave a, a short but very heartfelt speech saying that basically no one's going to take the this the title from him so uh, this that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about very quickly. Uh, this was again a very good show. I am I, I'm going to go ahead and buy it on DVD when it comes out, even though I just watched it because I feel like it would be necessary to have something like this uh, in my collection. And even if even if you're not a, a wrestling connoisseur. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not saying I am by any stretch of the imagination, but I would say that you should pick this up for the sole reason, if nothing else, than to support Chikara and, and, and what they do. Because really, uh, as Eddie Kingston said at the end of the show, they really are the best product in the world right now, I think. And I agree with He says it. I agree with him. I, I highly recommend that you check this out. If there's one single show that you should pick up this year. If you only have $15 that you can spend on, on independent wrestling, get High Noon on DVD. Seriously. Uh, I'm not kidding. It was well worth the $15 to watch it on iPay pay per view It's nice to see them moving uh, moving into the, uh, the new generation. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I, um, I look forward to seeing more of their shows uh, on iPay-Per-View. Of course, it's just going to put even a, a more of a drain on my bank account because I'm going to end up buying the DVDs anyway. But uh, I think it's worth it overall. So, again, thank you for joining me. Not again, this is the first time I'm thanking you. Uh, thanks for joining me for... Now I'm thanking you again. Ha! There we go. Uh, thank you for joining me for Episode 4 of the Irrational Wrestling Podcast. And uh, I might take a little break from it. But I might be back later on. We'll see. I don't know. Um, thanks for joining me. Be sure to uh, check out ChikaraPro.com. Or uh, I, I don't know if the uh, the shows are gonna if High Noon is gonna be rebroadcast on replays. But if it is, uh, do yourself a favor and uh, watch it. Watch High Noon. Chikara's High Noon. I pay per view. Okay. I think I've uh, I think I've given them enough. Uh, notice for quite a while. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you all later. And El Generico deserved better than the pre-show match, but then again, uh, the show was there to resolve conflicts and end feuds and the like. So, these two had a pretty good, uh, I think it was a 9 or 10 minute match. Um, 
I'm not going to say it was fairly typical, but uh, it did feel kind of like they were kind of not necessarily throwing in the towel, but um, it just felt like a very sort of by the numbers affair. Not bad, again. Um, Jigsaw won with oh god, what did he win with? I can't even remember. It's been what three hours? Not even th- not even three hours, maybe. And I've already forgotten how the match ended. Uh, I think it was with the double stomp, but you know, feel free to correct me. Uh, and I'll credit you on the, in the comments. Um, again, decent match, uh, decent pre-show match. I wish that they had had it on the card, and these two probably would have gotten a bit more of the recognition that they deserve. But hopefully, it'll be on the DVD, which I will definitely still be purchasing, even though I just watched the show. Okay. Well, the show proper began with the tag team contest of the Colony taking on the Young Bucks. And uh, in the first surprise of the night, uh, Marty Jannetty accompanied Matt and Nick Jackson out to the ring, which uh, I think was uh, <laughs> must have been pretty cool for them. Uh, the Colony actually won, which was a surprise to me, and uh, they gained their third point, and are now, uh, even though there were a few little technical hiccups, uh, there really wasn't much to complain about. The one, okay, there there was one technical thing that I would like to complain about, and it's it's minor. Um, it's that the uh, the sound between the announcing and the arena was not mixed very well, so the announcers were much much louder than the arena, so we couldn't really hear. Um, couldn't it wasn't it was difficult to hear like anything that was being said in the ring uh, during a match. Like uh, so, it, it wasn't a big deal, but. It was a little kind of weird, so um, like I said, not bad, but uh, it could have been a little bit more even, I suppose. So uh, I'm going to get to the results and talk about the matches real quick. Uh, just so you know, I don't think I did very well as far as uh, how my picks went. Uh, looking, I'm looking back at the at the results, and uh, I think I got uh, let's see, like one, two, three, four. Maybe like five of the eight. I think I got five. Okay, so that's actually not bad. Uh, but, you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not going to go back and listen to my own stuff right now anyway. Um, so let's start with the pre-show match between uh, Jigsaw and El Generico, which uh, I think were it uh, were it shown uh, with the Go Fight Live setup with multiple cameras and uh, with announcers that are not Dr. Keith Lipinski. I'm sorry, guy. Uh, but... Um, it just, it, I guess, it, it was, it was, it, it felt like a pre-show match, which is too bad because I think these two uh, jigs on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Randables Wrestling Podcast. Um, I said on Friday that I was going to be giving you the uh, results of Chikara's first eye pay per view, and since it just ended about ten minutes ago, and I'm finally getting my computer back to working so I can actually record stuff. Um, that was a little frustrating, but it's okay because I'm still kind of um, I'm still kind of riding high off the show. Uh, for its first iPay-Per-View, I would say that they did a pretty good job of um, just everything. The production was um, okay. It was pretty good. I mean, it's obviously it's not going to be the level of WWE or even TNA, but uh, it was similar to their DVDs. And 